How are we game leapers? Coach Eggs here and in this video you are going to learn how to win jungle every game. These 4 tips are the most important lessons to learn in the jungle and they include farming versus ganking, think different, ping different, back timers and pathing intention. Have you ever wondered what the best junglers in the world do differently to you? Well this video is one step in helping you close that gap. Having coached junglers from all elos to division and tier climbs, I guarantee these tips will help you out, so don't go anywhere. Quick shout out to our website gameleap.com, if you're serious about unlocking your potential on league then look no further. The market leader in providing you with informative videos, courses and guides, uploaded and updated on a daily basis. Please remember to like the video, we really appreciate it, and subscribe so you stay up to date with our must watch daily uploads. Let's get into it. First tip is answering the question, do I farm or do I gank? Every jungler I've coached in Diamond Elo and below either does one or the other. They either power farm until they can buy a dust blade, which is actually what some coaches will tell you to do, or they perma gank and only clear two camps in five minutes. So which one? Do we farm and hope our team survives, or do we gank and hope our influence pays off? Here's the thing guys, elo is a measure of efficiency, and this means time. Someone in low elo is going to waste a lot more time than someone in high elo, and this is why. They might, for instance, full clear towards their top side when they have a Leona and a Blitzcrank fighting it out in the bot lane, or they sit in a mid brush for one minute after clearing a control ward hoping the enemy mid laner has the memory of Dory from fighting Nemo. That was a rather extreme example for sure, but your focus as a jungler should be on making the optimal decision, whether that is farming or ganking. You should never commit to doing one or the other for the entire game, because no game is the same. This is why if you were to power farm in 10 games, talking to you Udyr mains, it might work in half of them, but the other half you lose because the game needed you to gank more. Now this is a simplified version of how jungling works, of course, but the lesson here is that the only thing you should care about is making the best decision. Sometimes there is no right and wrong, but most of the time in lower levels of play, junglers are worried about upsetting their teammates because they didn't gank, or they're ganking one side of the map too much so the other laners get mad. The number of students who have told me my teammates start pinging me if I don't gank them, they tilt, they rage, they flame, whatever they do. The reason they ping you and act like that is because they think exactly the same way as you do about jungling. You either perma gank or perma farm. And I am here to tell you that is wrong. And here is how you are going to think about jungling. And this leads into tip number two. Think different, ping different. I want you to start thinking of the jungle in terms of a 1v1, like Elena would. It's you against them. Your goal from this video onward is to not just get your lanes ahead, but yourself ahead. And the best way of going about achieving this is by thinking about the other jungler. If you were a mid laner and your opponent all of a sudden goes missing, what do you do? You communicate, you ping. Why? Because you are thinking about your matchup. And this is what you are going to do every game. Communicate. At the end of the day, it's a team game. You can't be in all three lanes at once, but you can ping all three lanes. How many times have you guys died to a Talon roaming bot, right? And your mid lane plucks up the courage to ping they are missing right after you died. Now, I'm not going to lie, I've been on both sides, but your focus is on your 1v1. Otherwise teammates are going to die, the enemy jungler gets fed, and that's when you get flamed and pinged. It's not just about you and your teammates gaining, it's equally as important to deny the enemy. Let's envision a situation. Say the enemy jungler is Annalise, and she starts bot side of the map. There is a very high chance she ganks mid or top after clearing her top side jungle, right? What happens if I danger ping my mid and top laner to let them know Elise is coming? They should play safe. Notice how I said should, because low elo is low elo for a reason, and some people want to try 1v2 on 100 HP, I get it. But Elise should get nothing out of it, or very little. So in essence, Elise is wasting time. I'm causing that. And what is time the measurement of, guys? Elo. Good. I can already feel you guys climbing divisions, you know that. If you don't ping and think about the enemy jungler, you are withholding information from your team. You are colluding with the enemy. Sounds like the Cold War. But that's the mentality. There is always going to be someone on the enemy team with smite looking to accomplish the same things as you. Some games even there might be, you know, a few of them because it is season 10 after all. Every jungler in low elo, except for those who I've coached, only starts pinging and communicating when the enemy jungler is spotted by vision or shows in a lane. Where are they when they aren't on a ward or ganking a lane? And these are the questions you need to ask yourself at least every time you clear a jungle camp. Pinging and communicating is essential as a jungler. It doesn't matter what champion you are playing or what type of meta it is, what the enemy jungler is playing, but you do more of it when you think of the jungle in terms of a 1v1. Think different, ping different. If you have learned from the tips so far fam, please drop a like and friendly reminder to subscribe so you don't miss our must watch daily videos in the future. Back to jungling. And this is one of the most important lessons. 
back timings. Jungling is a game of efficiency, right? And adaptability also between yourself and the opposing jungler. The one who triumphs is the one who best applies the concepts we have outlined so far, and back timings is another. The idea of recalling is simple, right? We're just pressing B and after 8 seconds we hit the base. We buy and out we go again. There are three major influences on your back timing. Listen up. Objectives. So when you're looking to recall, it is always important to check the scoreboard for the timing of important objectives such as Dragon, Rift Herald, Baron. The reason for this is that you want to be able to run towards the objective and be in its vicinity as it spawns, to prevent it from being taken away for free. An advantage of this is that in the event that a team fight does occur, you are at your strongest as you have just recently purchased all of your necessary items. On a side note, it is also important to conceal your recall, as this information alone allows the opposition to capitalize on your absence. They might try to sneak the drake for example. Information is knowledge and knowledge is power guys. I've said this a number of times in our previous uploads, you are more of a threat unseen. Gold is the second influence. An important indicator of when it is an appropriate time to recall lies in your current reserve of gold. Many champions shine at specific times of the game, or when they first purchase an item, often referred to as a power spike. For the purposes of jungling, this is generally when they fully complete their jungling items, so runic echoes, cinder hulk, warrior. It is important to memorize the gold necessary for these items because you never want to overstay on the map. Over time you become weaker, while enemies become stronger. Gold means nothing until invested. As soon as you have your jungling item, for example, recalling and purchasing it as early as possible will give you an edge over your opposition. That is, of course, if there is nothing else urgent happening on the map. Jungle camps is the third influence. So if none of the above can be applied to your current situation, recalling at a time in tandem with jungle camps is an efficient way to ensure you are at your strongest and healthiest to take down the camps. Generally speaking, it is efficient to clear the jungle camps on one side of the map before recalling, because you put them on timers, and in most situations you will be pathing towards the other side of the map. When you are sitting on some serious cash, it is actually faster to recall and purchase those major items and walk back to the camp than it is to kill the camp in your current state. Remember, jungle camps have levels as well guys. Each time you kill a jungle camp, it will respawn at the average champion level with greater resistances, so they take longer to kill, but they give you more experience. So. If you are still sitting on those items you had two minutes ago, you will waste a lot of time if you do this on the reg. Remember to hit the base. Last tip guys, but just as important as the others, pathing intention. When I say pathing, I'm talking about the order in which you are clearing your jungle camps. Now, what's the difference between good pathing and bad pathing? Time, right? So what's the first step to pathing efficiently? Well, the question is, what lane or side of the map do you want to end up at? Generally, you always want to path towards your strongest lane. This means it is safer to take objectives in that area and be proactive on that side of the map. Pathing towards your weaker lanes means you are playing with teammates with less gold and worse stats. Think about what would happen if the enemy jungler was there to help his strong lane while you are there helping your weak one. You never win the 2v2 or 3v3 and the game could well be over because you chose to path towards the fed enemy. Think about your lanes as if they were real estate. The most fed lane is your mansion. You want to protect that asset. Your weakest lane is a tin shed. The enemy jungler can take that whenever they want. No worries, just have it. Now, if you guys understood that analogy and liked it, let me know in the comments. So what camp do you start at? Well, if you want the strong lane to be your end point, the weak lane is your start point because that way you are pathing away from them. So let's think of two situations. You just recalled at level four and your top lane is your strongest lane. Gromp, walls, raptors, and krugs are all up. But how would you path? From krugs to raptors to walls to gromp. Good. Second situation, you have recalled in your mid lane is your strongest lane, but you only have raptors and krugs up. How would you path? You wouldn't go from raptors to krugs because you end up closer to bot lane, so you would path from krugs to raptors. Now, this is if nothing of real importance is happening elsewhere on the map. For example, you might have just started walls and your mid laner starts fighting, so you'd have to judge whether it's worth to help or to keep clearing. These decisions have to be made on the fly, and experience is the best teacher in that regard. Any questions about any of the tips in this video guys, leave a comment down below and we'll get back to you. Thanks so much for watching the video guys, I know these 4 tips will help you optimize your jungling. If you learned from the video, please leave a like, it helps us out heaps. Subscribe for more instructive jungling content in the future, and have a gander at our website gameleap.com under the videos, courses, and guides made by challenger level players and coaches to help you improve your game on the Rift. This has been Coach Eags. Until next time, peace.